Hey everybody, this is Steve Stein coming to you from Sweetwater in Fort Wayne, Indiana. And today what I'd like to do is talk to you about how to get a little more creative with your bending. Now before we even go into this, the first thing I want to explain to you is it's really important that you spend some quality time developing the concept of bending. Most guitar players know how to bend strings, which is awesome. But it's really important that you learn how to take your time and bend them in tune. Uh, because for me, you know, growing up listening to, you know, everybody from 70s blues guys to shred guys in the 80s to everything, fast and slow is really important, there's no doubt about it, but for me there are two elements that I think are absolutely crucial for a guitar player. One is vibrato and the other one certainly is bending. So what we're going to do is, and you may already know this, but I just want to make sure we talk about this. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about effectively trying to do the bend, what to think about. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to get a little more creative with different ways that you can bend. Again, whether or not you know a bunch of scales or you just know pentatonic or different things like that, half the fun of learning how to play guitar is exploring different things. And you know, just because you learn a scale doesn't mean those are the only notes that you can play. There's all kinds of really cool things that you can do. Listen to someone like, you know, Marty Friedman, for instance, and how many crazy ways he can do cool bends in the wrong places, but make it sound awesome, right? So what we're gonna do is, I'm just gonna be using E minor pentatonic for now, or E minor as my, uh, as my scale. And I try and keep everything fairly consistent in my videos where I'm using the same keys. That way, you know, you're not learning F one video and then you're doing B minor the next and you know, whatever. So we're gonna just stay in E here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up here and we're gonna talk about the effectiveness of the actual bend, and then we're gonna talk about different ways of doing this. So we're gonna go up to the E minor pentatonic to begin with here. And what we're gonna do is go to the 15th fret of the second string, okay? And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna be putting all three of my fingers, and you may do this differently, okay? But I'm gonna put all three of my fingers, my first, my second, and my third finger on this string. I'm going to be putting my third finger on the 15th fret, and the other two are really just anchors to help me pu push this up. And when I do the bend, what I'm basically doing is I'm trying to turn like I'm opening a doorknob, okay? It's not coming from my fingers, okay? My dad was a huge guy, which if you've ever met me before, you know I am not, okay? My dad was a big dude, and his fingers really aren't any stronger than mine, right? So it isn't about the fingers, it's more coming from the forearm and the wrist. This is where the action of the bend needs to come from. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take those notes and I'm gonna turn like this to raise that string in the air. Now, the question is, is how far am I supposed to be bending this? And that will always be the question. Now there's lots of different kinds of bends and we'll get to them. But the first thing we're gonna do here is on the 15th fret, okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bend up to 17. So we call that a two fret or a whole step bend. Now why am I bending to 17? Because 17 is another note in the pentatonic scale. So I'm actually just bending from one note to the next note, all right? So I wanna hear that in my head. I wanna play that note. Wherever, right? But I wanna make sure I get that sound in my head. So when I go to bend this, I'm bending up to the sound that I'm hearing. Okay? One of the worst things that you can do is when you start learning how to bend is bend out of tune. It just kind of sounds like you're, you know, torturing a cat or something like that. Or some weird space age thing or something like that. So the trick is, is really trying to make sure that you're bending these things in tune. So if you're playing a lick and you want to end it with a bend, Now there's tons of cool things that you can do with the bend, but it starts with learning how to bend in tune. So what we're gonna do is just talk about three what I call basic bends, which are essential bends that most every guitar player uses when they solo. We're just gonna base those off of this E minor pentatonic scale. So I'm gonna go to the 14th fret of the third string, the 15th fret of the second string, and the 15th fret of the first string, and they're all gonna be bent up a whole step, okay? They're all gonna feel different because the strings, you know, the thicknesses of each string are a little bit different. So as I play this, the tension that I'm using is going to change a little bit. So I have to continually use my ear to make sure I'm bending these things in tune. So let's just go, if you've got your guitar, you can do this with me. Let's go to the 14th fret of the third string, 
And again, I'm using my first, second, and third. And we're going to bend up to 16. Now, as I'm practicing this bend, I have to remember that there's no right or wrong in terms of how long it takes me to get there. I can bend the, the, the string really quick to get to that, that 16th fret sound that I'm looking for. I can take my time to get there. And again, we're going to get more creative with this in just a second, but just understand that the motion is what you're most concerned with and then hitting the right point, okay? Using these three fingers to bend that up to hit that sound, okay? Then we've got the 15th fret of the second string, which we just did. And that brings us to the 15th fret of the first string. Now, depending on the gauge of your strings, this sucker is sometimes kind of hard to do. It's the thinnest string, but it has the most tension. So uh, if you've got really thick strings, you just got to dig in a little bit more. But we're looking for the 17 on this string. So those are the first three bends to try and start getting used to, making sure that you're bending them in tune, okay? Now, once you've got that done and you start kind of dialing that in, and remember, you can always stop the video if you need to and just practice them for a while, trying to get comfortable with how that feels. At this point, I always tell people, if for some reason you're trying to do this and you're struggling, certainly more practice is going to help, but I also want you to be aware that string gauge can make a really big difference in your comfortability of your, of your bending. Okay, when I was younger, I used to put really thick strings on my guitars because everybody said the thicker the better because it made the tone better, which is probably true. But when I'm playing, I don't want to fight my instrument. I, I want to make this as comfortable as possible. Um, so as I'm playing and I'm playing in front of people or whatever it might be, you know, I can just do my thing and I don't have to worry about it. So finding a right balance of the string gauge can make a really big difference for you as well. So let's talk about some different things that we can do with these bends. So the first thing we can do, of course, is just bend it up like we're doing right now. Another thing is what I refer to as a dip, which is where you bend it up, and then you're going to bring it back down just slightly, and then you're going to bring it back up again. So it sounds pretty cool. It sounds great with blues and rock stuff, things like that. So I'm just going to go back to the 15th fret of the uh, second string and use that as my example. So my first way of doing it was this. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bend it up, bring it back just a little bit, and then bring it back up again. So I'm just dipping that string a little bit. Okay, so that's how you dip the string, and it sounds really cool. It just takes a little while to get used to, but you have to understand when I drop that, I'm not thinking, well, i got to drop it a half step or something like that. I'm just going by what it sounds like. Sometimes I can drop it just a little bit. Sometimes I can drop it even more, okay? So that's a really nice thing to get used to. Another thing that you can get used to is what is often referred to as a reverse bend, which is where you pre-bend it and then you bring it back down. So instead of going like that, what you're gonna do is you're gonna bend it up first and then you're gonna pick it. And that makes for some really cool sounds as well, okay? And there's a million other things that you can do with it, but this is a really great place to start by learning how to do this basic or fundamental bend, learning how to bend it in tune primarily. And then the second thing you're gonna do is you're gonna start learning how to dip it a little bit or put a, a reverse bend on it or whatever you'd like to do. Other things like, you know, Joe Walsh, things like this. <laughs> where I can bend it up and then I slowly bring it back down and I keep picking it and I might actually kind of speed it up as I go, right? If I do. That's another super cool way that you can utilize your bend as well. Lots of different things like that. And as we keep going through other bends, remember that all of these things are gonna be available to you. You just have to explore them to see what works best for you. And, uh, and what sounds best for the style of music that you like to play, okay? So the next thing we're gonna do then is we're gonna talk about what's called half-step bends. Now, half-step bends are exactly that. Instead of being a whole-step bend or two frets, 
we're only bending up one fret. And there's the logical half step bends that we do. Now let's say for instance again we'd be in pentatonic but the problem with pentatonic is it doesn't offer us any half step bends. So we have to add some notes into this which either come from diatonic if you know your diatonic scales uh, or your modes or whatever it might be or it's just you screwing around, right? When I was a kid and I was learning how to do this stuff, it wasn't because I knew my theory, it's because I would learn a song and, you know, Steve Clark from Def Leppard would be doing this or whatever it might be, and that's how I learned how to play it. And it wasn't until later that I realized what all the terminology was. So remember, you don't have to study five years of theory to start using these things. You can always do things now and then figure out what they are and why they work further down the line. What I'm always most concerned with is that you're, you're making music. Like when you walk away from this video, you're doing something cool that you weren't doing before. That's the most important thing to me, okay? So let's say for instance, I'm going to do a half step bend on the first string. So I'm gonna go to the 14th fret of this first string and I'm gonna bend it up to the 15. <laughs> Now that makes for a really cool melodic style bend, okay? You can play the 15 and then bend to the 15 and it sounds really neat. So even if you've never played that note before, which if you haven't, start doing it. Because you can see how melodic that actually makes your pentatonic sound, which is a whole other conversation, which I'm sure I have seven videos on too. But let's, let's make sure that we start thinking about how we can just take something that we're not playing we can bend it up a half step to become something that is already part of our scale. It's a really nice way of being able to do this. So what I like to do with these half step bends is, again, as I just said, I'll play a note and then I'll bend right after it, and then I'll usually bring it back down. I like the sound when I go. When I'm creating something more melodic like that. Another really cool way to use this that's very logical that you can use in music, uh, popular music, whether it's rock or blues or metal or whatever it might be, is doing the same thing but do it on the second string on the 14th fret. Okay, so that's another one that you could use. And I'm gonna combine these together in just a second here, but the last one I wanna explain to you is one that I use sort of inadvertently, so I'm gonna explain it to you because you've probably already seen me doing it, which is a blues bend. And a blues bend is very different than the other bends because a blues bend isn't a half step or a whole step or anything like that. It's more of a sound, okay? It's more of a vocal element. So what I'm doing, for instance, is if I go to the 12th fret of the third string and I'm gonna do a little blues bend there, what I do is I play the note and I hold it and then just before I leave, what I'm going to do is I'm going to twist that string just a little bit and then I'm going to take off. So it sounds like this. Now if I do that little twist, that little blues bend too early, it just makes my string out of tune. If I do this... Now again, that might be cool though. I mean, there are 70s tunes that I can think of that certainly use that in their, in their playing. Uh, American Woman, I hear that in that song when I hear that or when I play that. So the way I use it is I'll play that 12 and then right before I leave, I'll twist it and then head to my root or whatever it is I'm doing. So let me just play a little bit utilizing whole step bends, half step bends, and the blues bend together, okay? So you can just kind of hear what these things sound like. So that's a really cool way of being able to put all of these things together. Now, I'm gonna wrap this up just by giving you one last thing that I think sounds really cool and I use it all the time in my playing and you've probably already noticed that. All right, I'm gonna go back to that 12 again and I'm gonna bend it, but this time what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bend it a whole step, but I'm gonna bend it with my first finger. So I'm gonna grab that string and pull it like this. <laughs> Now when I do those bends, I almost bend it sharp. It just, because it's a really aggressive sounding bend. 
But it's a super cool bend to add. Now, the whole thing with all of these bends is you need to develop, A, the technique, and then B, the confidence. Because what I find a lot when I, you know, especially when I used to do, I, you know, just tons of private lessons and, and people would play, and I'd be jamming with a student or whatever it might be, and they would be trying to solo and they would go for a bend and they wouldn't hit it and then they'd get nervous, right? And they'd, they'd kind of go inward and then all of a sudden they're scared to play and they certainly wouldn't try for another one. And the goal is with these things, you listen to like Zach Wilde or all kinds of different players, the bend is what's aggressive, right? They, they just go for them, whether they're always in tune or not, they play them like they mean it. And that's one of the really important things to learn uh, about bending is, is practice the technique, practice the art of it, and then start getting more creative with the different ways that you can use them. So again, thank you to Sweetwater for allowing me to do this here. Uh, if you get a chance, obviously check Sweetwater out online. And if you're ever in Fort Wayne, it is very much worth the time to come out and check out the, uh, the facility. So take care and I'll talk to you soon.